welcome, welcome to our event today. Um, my name is Rob Mitchell, and I would like to introduce Steve today, who is doing the second in a series, second part in a series, Discover Exceptional Trading Results, Trader Behavior Modification. Uh, and before Steve starts, I'd just like to say um, thanks for taking your afternoon out to uh, come and be part of this event today. Um, and also, if you wanted, if you had not attended the first part, no worries on that. Um, that is available at stockindextradingroom.com. And if you go to the webinars page, you can find the first in the series there. And we'll get this one posted there. Uh, probably tomorrow. But uh, Steve had uh, made the decision to do this series for traders to uh, help them with the most perplexing problem that plagues many traders. And that is, and I've been humbled also as an educator uh, for traders in that a trader can know everything that he needs to know to be successful. He knows all the setups. He knows all the things he needs to do to manage his trades successfully. He knows all the things that the rational mind would uh, have in place to uh, be successful uh, trading. But yet when it comes down to actually doing it, something gets in the way. And this is one of the most wonderful topics that you, you could possibly uh, address. Now, Steve uh, doesn't come to this topic uh, without having a lot of experience. And so this is why I get really excited uh, when Steve's gonna talk on this because Steve has decades of experience as an educator uh, before he uh, came to uh, be the moderator and lead trader at the Stock Index Trading Room as a uh, golf pro and instructor. And he's taught thousands of people how to be successful in attaining what they need to do to be successful beyond just the mechanics of, of uh, doing it. And so he brings to the table with that a tremendous experience and uh, insight and uh, knowledge that he's going to uh, continue sharing with you uh, here today. And after having a, a tremendously good response to uh, the prior uh, in the series uh, that I mentioned a moment ago that you can see um, on the webinars page on the Stock Index Trading Room website. So uh, without further delay, uh, here's Steve, and uh, enjoy this presentation, take notes, uh, open your mind uh, to receive some uh, wonderful insights and knowledge, and, um, and uh, thank you again for coming in to, to uh, see us today. Steve, there you go. Thank you, thank you. Rob, thank you uh, very much. Somebody, let's do a sound check here, make sure that we are good to go, and we will go. Thank you, Don. All right. Hey, Sally. It's good to good to hear from you, ma'am. Okay. Um, first thing I want to do is is echo Rob's sentiments and say thank you for taking time out to be here. Um, you could be doing a lot of things this afternoon. Uh, if you traded the ES today, it was uh, it was rather lethargic and um, probably took a little stretch and whatever. Uh, I am just for your information, uh, so we don't drink from a fire hose today. I uh, actually cut this session in two, and in a couple of weeks or so, we're going to do the third and final series of uh, behavior modification. The second thing I'd like to do is thank Rob for the phenomenal tools that he has given us in the room to work with. They are sh nothing short of unbelievable. And um, and the members for all the work that they've put in to help put together a system that works. Uh, if you've not read this, you should. Uh, I will sum this up by saying I'm not licensed or qualified to give financial advice. Any mention of money is purely hypothetical. Uh, it would we would be referring to a uh, simulated account. 
you need to consult a financial counselor to determine if you have risk funds available to invest in the futures market. If you do, and that I say that to say this, if you do this with uh, risk capital, uh, you can make this work. Trading is a skill. Skills are taught and learned. You may not believe that, but it's true. And we'll maybe at the end of this presentation, you'll have bought into that a little bit more. If you do this with lunch money, we're probably going to have a tough time doing this. Um, I'm going to give you a two minute overview of what we have to work with. Rob Mitchell, as many of you know, uh, Robin's World Cup trader, master trader, uh, phenomenal results. And um, at one point was the largest e-mini trader in the world and accounted for on some days up to an over 20% of the market volume on a given day. So he was the 800 pound elephant in the room. Rob traded and uh, was very successful and then took a break and some he traded with some friends. And I said, Rob, you need to open a room and trading room. And Rob said, no, I don't. And they said, yes, you do. We'll help. They persuaded him to do that. Uh, they opened the all trading room. It was very successful. And people started saying, you know, your stuff is incredible. I want to buy it. Rob had never considered selling it. But uh, the demand was there. And he said, what the heck? OK, if you want it, here it is. And so unlike most systems that you run into, uh, this was a designed as a trading system and not as a system to be sold. So we're not vendors. I'm not a vendor. Rob's not a vendor. We're traders. Uh, I am a semi-retired golf professional. I have taught uh, all around the world at uh, the highest level. And golf and trading are exactly alike in the fact that we take um, a lot of um, care and calculation in making our decisions. We get the yardage, the win, the setup. You know, where do, where do I want to, if I miss it, where do I want to miss it? I go through all of that. I, I take action and I lose control of the result. I mean, I don't have any control of the future result of my golf shot any more than I have control of the future result of my trade. Both of those are unnerving for the unprepared trader and um, can be stimulating and very rewarding for the trader that has prepared and trained themselves. But anyway, trading is a skill. Skills can be taught and learned, and that's why we're here today. We're going to talk about that. So here we go. Why do we do what we do? As a trader, have you ever wondered why we seem to be so easily swayed by potential price movement or price movement? And why we are so blankety blank blank inconsistent? Why do we tend to change our thinking about a particular market setup or potential future? price action so often during the trading, that's going up, that's going down. I'm afraid it might go down. I'm afraid it might go, it might do this, but it's supposed to do that. And I don't think I'm the only trader that goes through that. I think there are other people that those thoughts run through their mind. Sometimes within a day, sometimes within an hour, sometimes minute to minute, tick to tick. Why do we almost never seem to have an issue in firing something or the other end of the spectrum can't seem to pull the trigger at all or not at the right time. Oh, here's a signal. I'm not sure it's going to work. Uh, and, and then it works in our favor some and we think, oh, OK, it's going to work and we get in and comes back against us three or four ticks and we hop out and, you know, we turn a winner into a loser. And we've all done that. We all sometimes continue to struggle with that but we don't seem to stick with our decisions for very long. Certainly if the market doesn't do them, if we get in and it takes off and whatever, then we're good to go. But you know, if it's like sitting there chopping around, it moves against us a little bit. Why do we doubt the decision that we made? And this is regardless of what you trade, it doesn't matter what you trade. What we're gonna talk about today is how to trade whatever it is you trade. We're not gonna talk about a lot of technical stuff.
But the answer is to all of these questions, why do I get in and out and in and out and in and out? And all of this is you don't want to be wrong. Is there anybody that shows up trading and, and says, you know, well, I hope I'm wrong all day long today. Well, I hope I don't, hope I don't get a thing right all day long. Of course, that's ridiculous. But the reason that we do what we do is because we don't want to be wrong. You can spin it and attest it to money if you would like. But deep down inside, the bigger issue is that we want to be correct in our decisions. Take the signal. Don't take the signal. Move the stop. Don't move the stop. Get out of the target. Let it run. All of those things that we're faced with on an ongoing basis over and over and over, day after day after day after week after month after year, we don't want to be wrong. We don't want to make a mistake. It's hard as successful adults to admit that we're wrong, we've made a mistake, we don't know everything, and that stands in our way of becoming a master trader. See, the good news about training yourself to trade successfully is once you decide what the correct, and you pick another word if you like it, I'm not sure I like that one, course of action is for you, it's become simple. See, it's only at the point that you decide exactly what the correct course of action is for you to trade that you can start to achieve consistent results. I've never talked to a trader yet, and I've talked to a lot. And so what would you like to create? Man, the first thing, I want to be, cons I want to be consistent. Now, what they mean is they want to be consistently profitable. but they want to be consistent. We want to be patient. We want to be disciplined. You know, we want to trust our trades. We, all of those things are necessary. And we're going to talk about all of that today and teach you how to do that. But everybody wants consistently profitable results. See, the bad news about training yourself to become successful in trading is that most people don't have a real clear and concise understanding of how and sometimes what. but how they should trade or want to trade. Well, should I get in here? I don't know. I think I might, this looks like this is one of those and maybe I should kind of sort of, oh, but what if it's, and we go on and on and on and our brain turns to mush and we end up getting so stressed out about the decision whether or not to take the trade that we don't handle it very well. The biggest weapon that a trader has against the market is um, focus, concentration, clarity. The biggest weapon the market has against a trader is doubt, fear, anxiety. See, the uncertainty makes tra wishy-washy traders really easy prey for true market masters. So the first step in training yourself, understand these words, training yourself, I can't train you, Rob can't train you, nobody can train you, I can't, I can, I coach people to play golf at a very high level, but they teach themselves, I coach them through the process, but they have to do it, you're going to have to do this, you're going to have to apply the fundamentals and the principles that I share with you longer than 30 minutes in order to train yourself to become a master trader. But I will tell you, it is doable for everybody that's in this room. So let's identify exactly what your trading is all about. What are my beliefs? What are, what's my style? Do I trend counter trend? Do I swing? Do I scalp? Do I chop? Do I whatever? What methods do I use? What are the exact specifics? Trailing, let it go to target, et cetera, et cetera. See if it's consistent results we want, we must take consistent actions that from Captain Obvious.
I want consistent results. If you came to the first session, you saw this. I want consistent results. Well, the only way, the only way, the only way to get consistent results is to apply consistent actions. If you disagree with that, then, you know, the rest of this is not going to not, not going to be very helpful for you. If you do the same thing, you're going to get the same results. If you do different things, you're going to get different results. What we want to do is we want to improve our actions to make them profitable and consistent. Well, our actions come from our beliefs or our belief system. And I can prove that to you because everyone in here has gotten, not gotten the results they wanted or felt like they deserved or felt like, like Rob was talking about, hey, at the end of the presentation, we're going to talk about why people, really talented people, struggle with results. We're going to talk about that. And they work on the action, so I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> right, right, exactly, ever until the next time. We work on our actions, and that, that won't work because our actions come from our belief system. Our beliefs come from thoughts infused with feelings. The third session in Master Trader Training Behavior Modification is going to deal specifically with our feelings and why they are sabotaging us now and how we can take our feelings and use them for our benefit. So we want consistent, profitable results. We have to take consistent, profitable actions. We have to have consistent, profitable beliefs. We have to infuse our consistent, profitable thoughts with feelings that will make it absolutely impossible to take an action that's contrary to what I believe. See, as a tr trader, anything else you want to do, you will never take actions that are in direct conflict with your belief. It's just not possible. Well, I don't like snakes. There are two kinds I don't like, live ones and dead ones, most of the dead ones. I think it's best to get away from them. I'm never going to walk up to one and look at it. And I'm just not ever going to do that because my belief system is run, forest run, get out of there. Now, other people love them. But we can never take actions that are in conflict with our beliefs. See, as humans, this is our limbic system. We run toward pleasure and away from pain. And we run away from pain much faster and aggressively than we run toward pleasure. So if you can identify behavior and thoughts that are making you take actions that you want to take that are getting you out of pain, and I'll share one here in a second, then you can eliminate the pain that's associated with that. Because this is not the end of the world. We have a signal that doesn't work. So what? I hit a golf ball and it goes in the water. Well, you know, I get another one out, drop it on the ground and keep on going. That's all I can do. It's not the end of the world. But see, here's the skinny your trading actions are 99.9% .9 guided by your belief system. I believe it's better if the market looks like it's going to break away. I believe it's better to get in it, even without a signal, knowing it may chop me up three or four or five times. I believe it's better not to miss a potential move. That's one trader. That I'm, when I say I'm a trader, I'm not talking about my beliefs. Another trader says, you know, it is, I've, I've got some 85 plus percent winning signals. And if I don't get one, I'm not in it. And I follow that. It's hard for me to believe that I'm not going to be successful over a long period of time. So whatever your belief system is, you are going to take action based on that. We can back that up if A equals B, B equals A. If you tell me what kind of actions you take, I can tell you what your belief system is. See, here's the scary part. We all have it, whether you know it or not. And it dictates every decision you make, whether I'm going to take the signal or not. 
when I'm going to scalp it out or hold it, move my trail, get it too close, give it room to work. We have a system that's guiding us that I think I'm better off if I do X rather than if I do Y. And if by doing X, I'm not getting the results I want. And if by doing Y, I would, then I need to train myself to do Y. And that's, we can do that. We're going to talk about that briefly today and how you can start the process of training yourself to make the decisions that you need to make to help you reach your goals. So if you're making decisions and taking actions that are not like what you would want them to be and aren't giving you the results you want, that's what's going on. And all you need to do is align your beliefs with your goals. That's all you need to do. Trader Abel believes it's better to take a calculated approach to trading the market. We'll trade only highly proven winnable patterns and signals, leverage those appropriately. And if Trader Abel doesn't get the signal, tra Trader Abel is not in a trade. Trader Burt pretty much thinks that if it's going to move, if it looks like it's going to move, I better get in there in case it does. Both are acceptable. We're not talking about one being better than the other. Both are acceptable unless Trader Burt or Trader Abel's not getting profitable results. So how about this? Since we're pretty much guided by our subconscious, it's important, critical, deal breaker, whatever, to get this part right. So Steve, why do I do what I don't want to do over and over and over? I'm never going to do that again until the next time. And I don't do what I know I should do or what is profitable. Why can't I make myself do what it is that I know I should do in the heat of the battle? See, and that's easy, and here's the deal. You've reinforced incorrect action for a period of time if you've traded more than two or three weeks. That's, just, that's all it takes. And the subconscious mind simply wants to make you happy. It's the only job is to please you. So here's an example. The market looks like it might run away, and we take a poke and hope entry. And hallelujah, it moves in our favor, and we end up with a winning trade. So what do we do? What do we do? Pat ourselves on the back, beat ourselves on the chest. Hey, we're the greatest traders in the world. You know, I did, I bet nobody else got that, and I got that, and I've got to be the best trader in the world. Boy, howdy, people are lucky to know me. And your subconscious is listening and going, huh, well, okay. And we may sit there and go, yeah, that's probably pretty fortunate. I've done that in the past when I got chopped up, but I don't care because this one worked. And that's all that matters is this one. And I'm going to resolve, man, I'm not ever, I'm not going to do that in the long run. You know, I'm, I'm just not going to do that. I know that's not the way to do it, but it did this time and I got by with it. And I know I'm never going to do that again until when? Until the next situation that's exactly like it. And it does it and you're in. And you know why? Because you rewarded that behavior in subby, subconscious, it's the only job to make us happy. So Subby will have you in there firing the poke and hope on the next one over and over and over and over and over, regardless of the outcome. Now, the next time we take in, of course, we get chopped out. You know, we're going to buy the top tick, sell the bottom tick. We've all done that. Market reverses just as we get filled. And how do we feel? Feel like an idiot. I feel like, God, Steve, you're the most stupid trader in the world. You said you weren't going to do that again, and you know better than that, and you did it, and I can't believe it. You don't deserve to be here. Blah, 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 blah. So now what's your subconscious thing is going, oh, God, wait a minute. Okay, I get in. Steve's happy. I get in, and Steve's depressed. I don't get in, and the market 
reverses right when I was thinking about it on a poke and hope runaway. I decide to pass up. It would have been a loser. I'm going, yay, I'm the greatest trader in the world. And then I don't get in and it goes 10 points uninterrupted. And I'm throwing stuff again and I'm saying, oh, God, I can't ever seem to get this right. I'm the worst trader in the world again. So now your subconscious is gone. You're cooked. Because, you know, you do, you do it one time and you're elated. You do it another time and you're depressed. So how's it supposed to help you decide whether or not you should, what you should do? And the answer is it doesn't. So now you're confused. Your subconscious is confused. There's no consistent basis to make a decision on. And you'll do anything to quieten the subconscious down. And what are the things we do? We get in and get out, and we get in and we get out. It's telling me, get in, and it's telling me, no, you need to get out. And so we, we can, and again, I'm laughing at myself. It's like, okay, I'm, you know, I don't want it to go anywhere without me, but uh, you know, last time my brain is just going in and out, in and out, do it, don't do it, do it, don't do it, because you have rewarded both behaviors. So it doesn't know how to help. So what's it doing? It's going back and forth. What does he want? Does he want in? Oh, no, he doesn't like it. He gets out. No, he doesn't like it. Get back in. Get back out. I don't know what he wants. I can't seem to help him make his decisions because whatever I do, he's not comfortable because he's not consistent. So if you're inconsistent in your actions, your subconscious can't help you be consistent. We've all done this. We've got a proven winning signal. We take it and it does not work. <gasps> Dude, I thought you told me that was a good one. <laughs> Even 99% winner will you know, lose once a year. How do you feel when you take a signal that doesn't work? Now, this is critical. This is the whole key of the kingdom right here. So pay attention. How do you feel? How do we treat this behavior? People that want to adjust, people that want to change, people that want to grow, people that want to make different decisions. This is it. If we beat ourselves, so I took that trade and it's a 95% signal it didn't work. What do I, uh, you know, whatever. You've done it. I've done it. We all do it. But little berate ourselves. Think it must be the most stupid trader ever to grab a mouse. And guess what? Subby's listening. And the next time that signal comes up, do you think you'll jump in there like you're supposed to with these alignment and clarity? Or do you think you'll have conflict and anxiety and fear and doubt? See, the last time you did it, you told subconscious he was stupid to do that. So you, I, you may can take the signal. You're probably going to pass out trying, trying to get it in. And it's really hard to stick with it. Because the last time you did it, you told yourself it was not the right thing to do. Don't ever do that again. We managed to take the signal it wins. We pat ourselves on the back. Hey, I'm the greatest dumb King Kong trader and blah, 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 blah. And so again, subconscious is going, wait a minute. Okay, we took that green below and we won 12 points and he's the greatest trader in the world. And then we took that green below and it moved against us and we lost two points and he's screaming and hollering and throwing things. So I don't know what to do on the next one. I'm going to be honest with you. So what do we do? We, we answer, we open. Next time it looks like we may get a green below, what do we do? And I know y'all do this. I do it too. Used to. I've had people tell me, we, we look at our email. We check our phone for texts. We uh, get up and stretch our legs. We go get a drink of water or whatever. We subconsciously do anything to dodge making a decision because subconscious doesn't know what to do. So what's it going to do? It's going to default to pass. And to pass, we have to deflect our attention. So if you ever wonder, boy, I always seem to not be looking at the screen when the great ones show up, that's why. That's exactly why. It's because you've given it two kinds of reinforcement, positive and negative, on the same thing. So it has no idea what to do. It's got no clue. So it's just going to default. It's going to get out of the way.
Okay, came here to fish and not cut bait. So let's get let's get on with it. This is the fix. Just the first thing you got to identify what you got. You got to hold it. You got to hold your decisions accountable to something. Whatever it is. Exactly. Because there's only three consistent thinking, consistent thoughts infused with feelings that lead to consistent beliefs, that lead to consistent actions, will lead to consistent results. That's the only way. Can be no other way. In the room, we talk about our job description. What's your job description? If you had a boss, you know, would your boss hire you to trade the way you trade today? Could you get hired if you say, here's my resume and here's a video of what I did today? Would you get hired to do that? And if the answer is yes, kudos, we can learn from you and would like to. If the answer is, yeah, probably not, then let's fix that. That's very fixable. But it's the whole shoot match. Entry, filter, trail, stops, loss on the targeting, everything. Define, okay, what am I going to do? And then trade it. You'll never have belief or confidence in anything until it's proven to you. And the only way it'll ever be proven is if you do it and get results. Each and every time you follow your proven winning system, you give yourself positive feedback, regardless of how this particular trade worked out. When you fail to follow your proven winning plan, be stern with yourself. Stop settling for results that are inferior to their abilities. I shared this over a year ago uh, with some people in Rob's room when he was in China. Every trading system, regardless of how profitable, includes signals that simply do not work. As a master trader, I accept this fact as part of trading. I refuse to let a few signals that don't work out influence my future as a master trader. I feel successful and professional when I follow my trading plan regardless of the outcome of any individual trade. I feel sick to my stomach when I fail to follow my proven, proven trading plan. It is impossible for me to take any action while trading that does, does not do any actions. No, that do not, I'm sorry, I got that right that do not fully support my quest to become a master trader. And I've shared this with people. People, I've been talking with people on the phone and I go, hang on, wait a minute. And they go, what? And I said, I had to take this trade. And they went, well, you're talking to me on the phone. And I go, I know, but it's impossible for me to sit at my, I didn't want to take it. I could have gotten up and left, but it has become impossible for me to, pass a proven winning trade. I just can't do it. I can get up and leave, but I can't sit there and be at peace. I mean, I have, there is such conflict in me. When I think the market is fixing to take off and I go, where's my Andrew? What can I do? Da, da, da. I don't have one. If I hop in there anyway, guess what happens? Y'all know. I get literally physically sick to my stomach. It's amazing how powerful the brain is. And so I trained my, cause I wasn't very good at this. So I trained myself to have the correct thoughts, infused them with positive feelings that led me to the correct beliefs, which led me to the correct actions, which led me to the correct results. I'm not good enough to look at the market like some of y'all and go, oh, well, this is probably going here and there and blah, 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 and boom, 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 and we're in and out and all of that. I'm, just, I'm not anywhere near that. I don't know that I ever will be. The good news is, is that's just not necessary. I probably never will be because I'm not trying to develop that. I got a plan and it works and I'm working the plan and that's it for me. Okay. See, and if I can train myself to do it, you can train yourself to do it. Let's wrap it up. See, life in general rewards belief, confidence, faith, courage, fortitude, and resolve. Tends to punish double-mindedness, confusion, fear, doubt, anxiety, wishy-washy, et cetera, et cetera. See, trading simply a microcosm of life. Rob Mitchell's the first person I ever heard talk about that. He said, man, trading's just your life. 
And I thought, what? I'm not sure about that. Boy, and like, I don't know, a period of time, several months later, I went, God, that's brilliant. It's one of the most incredible statements I've ever heard. Oh, I meant to put this in here and I forgot. I'll tell you now. Uh, I get paid to read. As a trader, I get paid to read. Because when I read, I become a better person. And when I become a better person, I trade better. So I get paid to read, which is pretty cool because I like to read. Be steadfast in your beliefs that you're going to take only winning actions from now. Is every trade going to win? I hope so, but probably not. Are you going to have more winners than losers? Yeah, if your signals are good. If your signals aren't any good, come join us. we got some great ones. I mean, we've got some really good signals. Never, 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 never allow yourself to deviate from this. See, because if you do, here's the here. Not that you won't win or lose occasionally, and that type of thing. That's not important. It's, that's that's has nothing to do with this. See, here's the important thing. If you say I'm never going to do that again, and you do it, does your subconscious believe that you're honest? Of course not. You're not honest to yourself. I will always do that. I'm always going to take that signal from now on. How many times have we said that? And then the next one we pass, and it wins. Well, you're not going to believe in yourself if you're not honest to yourself. So don't say anything that you're not going to do to thine own self be true. Decide what you're going to trade, whatever. I've got a little eight pound puppy and we make jokes and she lays on her right side, we're long. And when she lays on her left side, we're short. When she's on her stomach, we're flat. And one day I looked over, I don't see her. One day I looked over at her. She was on her back with her feet up in the air. And I went, oh, God, the world's coming to an And that's we. I'm not making a lot of anything. There are a lot of ways to do this successfully. But you got to be consistent to get consistent results. How are you going to execute from initiation of the trade to the close? And then resolve to say, that's just what I do. I'm going to do it because it's what I do. Some days it is nothing short of a miracle, the results that we get. Other days, yeah, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. That's just trading. So it's only with consistent, consistent action that we get two paramount results that they manifest. You start to achieve consistent winning results, and that builds belief in yourself. And once you start to believe in yourself because you are trustworthy of belief and you are consistent in your actions, you are unstoppable. See, but this can't ever happen unless you do what you say you're going to do time after time after time. If it hair lips the governor, I'm going to stay in this trade until it hits a target. If it hair lips the governor, I, you know, people have heard me say that in the room. Um, See, we'll never achieve our dream of becoming a master trader till we believe we can. Okay, I promised you, why do some people seem to just really get good results without a lot of effort? We don't like those people very much, but they're around. And part of it's experience and blah, 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 yada, yada, whatever. But I think I figured out the key. I'm almost sure I have. And other people, just as smart, just as talented, work hard, put in their time, must get average results or worse. Took me a long time to get to this one, but I remember the day I did know it. Oh, man, this is good. Here it is. An exceptional trader will only trade exceptional signals during exceptional market conditions. A good trader will trade good signals during good market conditions. An average trader will trade or settle for average signals during pretty much any market condition. And a poor, confused, unfocused, anxious, fearful, unsuccessful trader has never seen a signal they didn't like. See, and here's what most people do. We become exceptional at trading average signals. But guess what? you're not going to get exceptional results. You're just going to get average results. Doesn't matter how hard you work or how good you get. Because you're trading average signals. You can't get exceptional results from average signals. It's impossible to get out more than you put in. It's just, it's the law of nature. So I know people that are brilliant. 
and just seem to struggle. And we look at what they do and they go, well, what about this? How much does that work? Well, you know, not as much as I would like, but I just, you know, I feel like I probably should take it in case. And I understand, and we all, we all do that. That's um, probably average. And they're exceptional at trading that, but the results are just 50-50 because that's what the signal does. So if you want exceptional results, it can be no other way. You have to trade exceptional signals. And again, if you don't have if you don't have them, come join us. We got we got several. See, so think about this. What if you became exceptional at trading average or poor signals? You're just going to get average or poor results. But what if we just were pretty good at trading exceptional signals? How good would that be? I promised you this. Uh, we've proven patterns to repeat time and time. And we test these to their dependability to help traders grow their account. Growing an account becomes simple if you can find a signal, a set of signals that are proven to be profitable, and then work and become excellent at trading these winning signals. Here are a few, but not all, of the signals that we have proven win rate that we use in the room. A uh, red bar above a red smart price bin wins 86% of the time, and this has been um, this has been tested over a year. Now, there's a reason our signals work so well, and it's because of the uh, it's because of the, I can't, there's not a word that I know that could come close. Phenomenal coding that Rob's put in this. Green below green, 84.8. Touch and go up, touch and go down, and I'm going to show you what those are like, and we're through. Now, this is, I think, Friday of last week. Uh, I just grabbed this. Here's touch and go. And basically a touch and go signal over here, this red bar, is our smart price band is red. Market blues below it. Comes up and touches it and takes off. Well, guess what? If it can't blast through the smart price band, there's a lot of selling going on right here. The, the, the idea that this is going to continue down versus reverse in here, it's probably greater than probably great. It's probably about 85% to be honest with you. It's probably got about 85% chance of going and we measure everything. It has to go at least two bars to be a winner. Now, you know, you can trade it 6, 8, 10, 12. We had a trader that's been trading about three months that I got a hold of a screenshot here. Uh, bought this. I think pretty much everybody in the room trades this. Got out 10 points later because we had a target up here and this trader's belief system is, is that we should hold a winning trade until it goes to a target or reverses against us. And a target was up in here toward the top. So that's what I have. Uh, we don't need that. We don't need that. Um, yeah, here's some cool stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to wrap it up with this. Uh, but again, we're glad you came. We appreciate you coming. Um, it disturbs me as a coach and a teacher you know, I've, I've taken on this and say, yeah, okay, let's, I've got a, a, a wonderful mentor and Rob and a great opportunity to uh, make a difference in some people's lives with this. And I've spent 25 years learning how to teach and coach. So, you know, I might as well continue to use it. It bothers me when people that are able to win don't because of the things we've talked about today. It bothers me when people work and work and try and care and are passionate about becoming successful at this and continue to make the same decisions over and over and over and I have no idea why. They go, yeah, I know I shouldn't do that, but I can't help it. Can't help myself, Steve. Well, I can tell you that can, the process of changing that and fixing that can start today. You can help that, maybe not tomorrow, but certainly within two to three weeks. Decide exactly what it is that you want to be about. Identify how to do that and then go about doing that and then be true to that. What will happen is that your subconscious all of a sudden will go, you know, well, this person's honest now. They say they're going to do something and they do it. They say they're not going to do something and they don't do it. So I, they, 
my subconscious aligns itself with my goals. And so then I start making great decisions. It's magic when it starts out, just clicks into place. I've talked to you know lots and lots of people of, from the room that are doing this now. And they just go, you know, Steve, just one day, all of a sudden, I was not doing what I used to do. And I realized at that time, wow, this stuff works. So uh, I'm going to get out of here. It took me about five more minutes that I meant. I'm sorry about that. I do. I do, I do, I do. In the, uh, yeah, I've got to be careful in the room, Bob. But no, yeah, I trade. I trade an account. Any trade that you see that's a live trade from anything we've done is uh, my money. I'm not going to trade a same account. I'm just not going to do it. But I'm not licensed or qualified to give financial advice. Some people would think looking at a live trade would be me advising them to take the same kind of action. So, yeah, I got a, you know, it's a little sticky area there. Rob, I'm going to turn this back to you or you can close it if you'd like. Uh, we're grateful again. Thanks for everybody taking time out to come. Uh, this is recorded. This will be uh, available and you could look at this over and over. And Rob's got the email there. You know, if you need to get a hold of me about anything, just um, just shoot me. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close it. Rob signing off. Rob, I appreciate you and you know it. We'll have this posted tomorrow. Everybody, good luck, good trading. This is doable. This is very doable and you can do this. So take it to heart, make the changes you need to make and become a master trader.